MMOs share a common goal. Make you play and make sure you never stop playing. Immersion, expansion, narratives, numbers going up. Developers are always looking for that special recipe that hits it just right for you. And this is no easy task. Not a lot of games are able to do this, but a select few have beat the odds and are still around to this day, 20 years later. And as someone who's played, um, none of those, I don't want to, because behind the success of all of these titles are 20 years worth of content meant to make me want to keep playing forever and ever. And I'm sure a lot of those games have a great new player experience. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. If you've got a funny story about trying any of those games recently, uh, tell me in the comments. I like reading funny stories. I read things. Diving into an MMO that has been pumping content into itself for 80% of my lifetime sounds incredibly hard and, and very irresponsible. But some of you love incredibly hard things and being irresponsible. And one of the games that has survived its 20 plus years of pumping into itself happens to be RuneScape. But RuneScape offers a very unique dilemma for new players or returning players. There's a... Uh... There's two of them. Same company, same offices, just two different games. If you've tried to navigate this fork in the road on your own, you've probably not found an answer. Unfortunately for you, there's a lot of pros and cons to weigh out with each game. And it calls for you watching this video essay in its entirety from start to finish. And look, I'm gonna do my best to not be biased here. I've played both games. I've been in the RuneScape community for about 17 years now. And I can assure you, I hate both games equally, so whether you're a returning player trying to figure out what's going on confused as hell, or you're a new guy who's lost and scared, or you're a viewer here because you know that I don't make bad videos, come along with me. We're gonna figure out which game's right for you. Before we get too into it, uh, we've got sponsored today. Who is it? Oh, no shot. Oh, no shot. Hey, what about my world? What about my world? No, no, I heard you. Everybody knows about your world now. No one's trying to, de to debunk your world. It's never happened. That is not true. You're in mine now. You, this is a problem. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. It's not even what I was saying. You're just talking about yourself. Every time I see you, you're doing this. Let me guess. You, uh, you want me to tell everyone about it. Tell them more about it. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right! Today is sponsored by Hero Wars. Everyone can find a character that suits them. Cyborgs. Aliens. Vampires. Unlock Chaba. He's a tank. I, I can't believe we almost forgot. Celeste. S-tier character. You're gonna be playing it all the time. Starting February 13th, you can gather soul stones and skin coins with three amazing heroes. While you're sitting there, you're thinking, how can I get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five characters so that I can go and start dominating? And you're lucky I knew you were thinking that because uh, you can do that right now. Just click the link in the description and uh, that thought you've been having is suddenly real life. Thank you to Hero Wars for sponsoring today's video. Wait, what about my world? You see? Isn't that annoying? I came in your place and did it to you. Did, how does it feel? Play Hero Wars today. All right, runescape.com. Here's the landing page. When you type it in and you've never been here before, this is what you see. They don't give you a lot of time to think here. You got to choose a game. Which one do you want to play? There's two of them. We've got two. But hold on for a minute because one of these clicks uh, can be a lot more expensive than, than the other one. No one's forcing you to make this choice. Don't feel pressured. That's why I'm here. Let's give Jagex a chance. Let's see what they have to say about these two different games. I'll translate what they actually mean to say. So let's start with old school RuneScape and uh, find out more. Gilinor, like it used to be. Now I don't want you to be alarmed. It never used to be blender models and oversaturated backgrounds that you will never see in the game. Jagex chose this design because half the RuneScape content creators are using unrecognizable and disgusting blender thumbnails. So it's just a phase, they'll get over it. Everything will be back to normal soon. It's just a bad time. Choose your challenge. Hanging out with friends, doing dangerous quests, the hunt for the world world's strongest wand, or a fabulous hat. Okay, so yes, there, there's a lot of activities to do in the game. I think it's kind of funny that hanging out with your friends is, 
in the category of challenges. They understand you. But if you want to go bossing or PVM with friends, you can expect to clock in about 200 hours of gameplay before you're able to. And if you're a new player, make that about 300 to 500, depending on you. I just don't want you to get excited about the literal first thing they tell you about. A rich story and a deep well of lore, corrupt rulers, musings of the village baker, world shattering urgencies and casual procrastination. I'll be the first to tell you there is some very deep lore in old school. Uh, I'll probably be the last as well, because no one else gives a shit about it. It's just not people's favorite thing in this game. We'll get to that later, but quests uh, are not are not something people boast about in old school. Players have the deciding vote. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna forget to vote in these polls. It's probably for the best. You have no right to tell us what's good for this game. If you're new, don't just pretend like you never read this. Don't come here just to ruin things for us. We've got a little cinematic playing at the bottom. Castle Wars minigame, not what that looks like in the real game. That's not what's going on there. That character looks really cool doing that. Uh, the person playing is about 45 hours deep into doing that exact same activity. They're sad. Okay, now this is the most nostalgic thing in here. This is very accurate. Uh, probably what you will look like. Straight out of 2007, this is actually a very good representation. This guy has a dragon longsword before a rune plate body. I like this one. Okay, so that was old school. Let's give uh, RuneScape 3 a look. A classic adventure reborn. I know what you're thinking. Wait a second, wasn't that the last game? A classic reborn old school RuneScape? Uh, yes, this seems to just be an extremely poor choice of words. You're gonna have to just trust me on this that we're about to read about RuneScape 3. Play your way. Will you explore Gilinor with friends or seek fame and fortune alone? Play how you want, wherever you want. The choice is yours. What type of hero will you be? Yeah, so I think whoever wrote this was just kind of out of ideas at this point. The story of RuneScape 3 is fairly linear. I feel like you can explore with friends and make money whenever you want. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can do, you can do either one. Uh, this is basically a blurb of nothingness. Endless discovery. <laughs> Join hundreds of millions of players. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Jagex. Boy, let's let's back up here. Hundreds of millions of people have not played this game. There is maybe been a hundred million players that have ever logged in to either version of RuneScape in its entire history. All these hundreds of millions of players are either bots or one of us just making our 12th alt account that's free to make however many times we want. RuneScape 3 is not even the more populated game here, so I, I don't even know why they chose these words of all to describe this game. This all doesn't even matter in the grand scheme of things today, but, uh, but they wrote that and I read it. So that's their fault. With 28 skills to master, what does your future hold? Will you be one with nature by woodcutting and fishing? Or would you prefer creativity with smithing and, and construction? With so many paths to follow, you can truly become whatever you dream of. Here's a spoiler. Your future holds all of these. If you want to play this game, get into mid-level and end-game content, you'll be doing all of the things listed. You are not a, a woodcutter fisher or a, a construction smithing guy. You are all of the above at some point. There's no limits to what you can train and when you can train, except for invention maybe, but don't worry about that. You're not gonna get to invention. You do everything in this game. So there's, there's the answer to the rhetorical questions that someone got paid to write. And also, oh my God, wait, you gotta tell them to like the video. We, we do that now, remember? We, we beg, we beg really? for, for likes. Do it. Say it. Just say it. Oh, you'll love, you'll love telling them. Just do it. Try it out. Like the video. Oh, good work. Please, God, like the video. Both the games had trailers at the end of them. Uh, they don't really do much information wise, but they're both very accurate representations of themselves. RuneScape 3's was fast paced, aesthetically pleasing, but just felt very wrong and weird for some reason that I can't explain. Also very confusing in, in the grand scheme of things. And minus the terribly inserted overhead text, Old School's was well put together. Very true to itself in the classic aesthetic it promotes, but good God, it went on for way too long. It was a grind getting through it, you could say. Jagex has made this huge marketing pitch to us. Let's summarize a little bit what we've we've gathered. Um, nothing, we've pretty much learned nothing. Now, the deeper you get in any MMO, the more complex things become. When you're at the surface and you've experienced nothing about the game, complexity should pretty much be non-existent. Old School RuneScape's famous tutorial island, it's almost comforting in the classic fixed mode of the game, which looks like this. The interface takes up 
more than half the screen. There is more UI here than game itself, but the UI is introduced to you one icon at a time. They don't overwhelm you with all this crazy stuff. They just kind of show you how simple everything is as you move along. Simplicity at its finest, and it's what makes old school so charming, uh, handsome even. There's a reason that this was a lot of people's first MMO. It just holds your hand and welcomes you before it, it releases you into the world. Anyone can get a, a grasp on this game from the tutorial alone. RuneScape 3, on the other hand, they've been trying to figure out a good tutorial for about 10 years now. In 2008, a tutorial called Learning the Ropes replaced Tutorial Island. They eventually realized that that one sucks and uh, they, they reintroduced Tutorial Island for a while. And then they took it away again when they introduced uh, Unstable Foundations, the new tutorial into the game. And then five years later in 2014, the tutorial Ashdale replaced that one. And then finally in 2018, they took Ashdale out, they put Tutorial Island back, and it is currently the tutorial for RuneScape 3. Unless you're on mobile. Then you're given a completely different tutorial called Dave and Dale. Combat or cooking. Left click your backpack to open it. There's no backpack for me to open. I, there's no icons. They disappeared. I can't click anything. I, there's no, I can't do anything. I'm stuck on Dave's Island or whatever the fuck. I'm gonna re I have to report a bug. I'm actually reporting a bug right now. It's safe to say that Jagex has never really figured out a good way to introduce new guys to RuneScape 3. It's not as simple as it used to be. I mean, they try to introduce the UI one icon at a time like it used to do. Watch as I go from Tutorial Island to the mainland. That is a lot more than, than was there a second ago. They, they skipped a lot of things suddenly. Where it is anything anymore, I am, uh, what happened? But don't let that discourage you from becoming a new player of RuneScape 3, because luckily, the RuneScape 3 video making community has a lot of people uh, who make guides and uh, make guides. There is nothing in this game that some dude has not tried to start a YouTube career explaining. The RuneScape 3 tutorial island is YouTube. To be able to see Lumbridge for the first time again, dude, I, I would pay a lot of money. Like a lot of money. If you've never logged into RuneScape before, just go do it, dude. Go fix the childhood you missed out on. If not for you, for me. Just go do it and tell us how it feels. There's a reason that old school players have done the early game over and over and over again, and every time there's a new game mode or something that comes out, they don't mind starting from nothing. No matter what kind of player you are, the early game content is gonna be awesome. You can take your time killing cows for dozens of hours for your first few levels, or you can rush a mid-game quest as a level three and, and skip the first like 40 attack levels. Old school RuneScape early game is good. Just a couple months ago, I experienced RuneScape 3's early game. And I've realized that the developer's favorite part about the early game of RuneScape 3 uh, is getting you the hell out of it. If you couldn't tell by the whole tutorial dilemma, these dudes are kind of just scratching their heads when it comes to new guys. They don't really know what to do with you. RuneScape 3 is fast. So I think one of the most important things about playing a video game is understanding what exactly is in that video game. You should know that. The roots of these two games are identical. A lot of content from, from characters or items, even quests, a lot of them will be similar, if not exactly the same. These two games just kind of went down two entirely different directions and just kept going with it. RuneScape 3 took the path of lore focus, immersion, world expansion, timelines. For example, in old school, one of the RuneScape gods is named Zamorak. In that world, he's just some dude that a bunch of evil people worship. We don't really know too much about him. People, we've heard stories. We've never seen him in person. That, that'd be crazy. He's just red and bad. In RuneScape 3, you can literally talk to the guy during some of the quests. You could see his story unravel, learn as much about him as you want. And as of a few months ago, literally fight him as an endgame boss, like the endgame boss of RuneScape 3 right now. I mean, there is an entire skill dedicated to the lore of RuneScape 3. It just goes so deep. So if you're really into immersing yourself in a more fantasy setting and learning lore and really getting to know the characters that you're talking to and why you're doing certain quests, you'll enjoy RuneScape 3. Starting in the fifth age is a, is a good for nothing nobody who, who's just a pain in the ass for everybody. You evolve into the uh, the, the universe hero or uh, guardian, guardian of the galaxy, whatever they call you. You have an actual hero arc in the RuneScape 3 world, uh, whereas you're just a permanent nuisance in old school RuneScape's universe, which I like. I think there's a charm to being 
a, a just, uh, just, a, just a guy. Don't get me wrong, quests and storylines have been added to the game and expanded upon. Old school RuneScape's focus is less so on the lore of the game and more on the grind set. Mini games to expand skills and provide new training methods. Quality of life updates and upgrades to work towards. Raids with insane movement mechanics. Even PvP at, at, at one point. Theater of Blood, which is a raid. 90% of players who are doing it, they could not tell you a sentence of lore of how you got there, what your character's doing there, why you're able to be in there. They know nothing. They don't care. Do not bother them with that information. They just know they need to move at certain times, click on certain squares at, at certain moments, switch to certain gear in the combat triangle to make sure they stay alive and hit efficiently, eat when life number low, and click chest. Click uh, hopefully purple chest at the end. Click that. Open it up and make money and then do it again. Players are not here for the story to say the least. They're are here for their own set goals and achievements. In fact, a vast majority of old school players use a client called RuneLight, and this client has skill calculators, plugins for quality of life, and one of the most praised plugins on this client is called Quest Helper. And oh boy, does it help with quests. It does a whole lot more than hold your hand. It puts you on its shoulders and, and fights anything in its path. You can finish every quest in the game and wear a quest cape without reading a line of dialogue. It will tell you where to click. You'll never need to wonder. An NPC during a quest could literally tell a player their IP address and their social security number, and they would not blink an eye because they wouldn't see it. They're not paying attention to it. They've space barred. They're already past it. Don't get me wrong. You can get into the stories of old school. Trust me, you can't. But no one's getting too excited about slowing down their progress so they can read about some lore they're not really invested in because it doesn't matter too much. Now, if I had a nickel for every time I've talked about the old school and RuneScape 3 combat systems, I'd have about 40 cents, but it comes down to this. Both games are point and click. RuneScape 3's is just a little more customizable to how it's automated or whether it's automated at all. Old school's combat is about as simple as it can get in a video game. You click a monster, you eat when your health is low, and you move on to the next one. Late game raids and big quest bosses on either game are gonna call for you uh, to learn some new mechanics. Old school's gonna end up focusing more on movement and understanding game ticks, whereas RuneScape 3 more so on abilities and the combat triangle. As a new player, you can't really go wrong for either game for combat because both of them, you're gonna start out extremely simple and work your way up to new mechanics. Now, skilling, that's where these two games are very different. In old school, there is a balance to new methods introduced to the game. Between XP per hour and cost, nothing's gonna be introduced into old school that would invalidate someone's accomplishment. Now, RuneScape 3, that's a, that's a different story. The skilling of RuneScape 3 is where things start getting weird. The methods of the main game are so fast that 99 capes aren't really a big deal anymore. Nowadays, it's a 120 cape that mostly means something. 13 million XP for 99 versus 104 million XP for a 120 cape. It's like getting that 99 cape eight times. Most skills in the game are completely AFKable from the bank. You're not going to do anything in the world, you're staying at the bank and AFKing skills like agility and slayer and hunter, even construction. And how is that? Well, it was inevitable that we got to this part. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, RuneScape 3 has dug itself the hole of pay to win. You can spend as much as you want on treasure hunter keys. Guaranteed shitload of XP. A player could be at the bank, look at their skills, see they have 87 hunter and say to themselves, well, I want that to say 99. They can proceed to blow their paycheck on keys and it will be 99 in about 30 minutes of clicking on lamps. And that's just from lamps. Things are AFKable because you could get skilling dummies and you can set them up at the bank and you can train pretty much every every skill in the game and just get XP by not doing anything. And the reason it sucks is because if you have two players standing next to each other wearing 99 capes, you don't know the difference between the player who grinded for hours and hours a day to get that cape and the guy who paid $400 and, and got his cape in a couple hours. And over the years, this has been a huge slap in the face to players who feel like they got their accomplishment completely stripped from them. It's definitely destroyed people's sense of achievement. But the good news is you're a new player. You don't have any previous achievements. You're starting from scratch. And if you feel like buying XP isn't going to ruin your sense of accomplishment, which it will, then you have that option. Just don't mention it to anybody in the old school community. Old school does not and will not ever have any form of microtransactions. I promise you that. Don't ask about it. Don't mention it. Just pretend that microtransactions are, it's non-existent. But I mean, 
over here go crazy. Every single person here has participated in, in microtransactions. They won't admit it out loud, but, you know, they have. They definitely have. But as a side note, there is a way to feel accomplished about your RuneScape 3 achievements without microtransactions ruining it for you, and that's to play an Iron Man. At first, I was kind of hesitant to suggest playing an Iron Man on either games to new players, because there's no doubt, playing an Iron Man is harder than playing an ordinary account. Playing an MMO as if it's single player. No trading other players, just you and the world's resources. It might be frustrating at points, but it's still fun. There are loads of guides to get you through any challenge you might find yourself in. I think it might be one of the only ways to get that true, authentic first time RuneScape experience again. You're gonna have to learn everything. If it's too much, just make a new account and just beg people for things. It's, we, we all did that at some point too. And on the RuneScape 3 side, Iron Man cannot participate in microtransactions. There's no treasure hunter keys available for you if you're an Iron Man. If someone has an Iron Man symbol next to their name, you can immediately confirm that everything on their account was through in-game grinding and not their wallet. In fact, most OSRS players who also play RuneScape 3 will tell incoming players to play an Iron Man because it will give you that chance to feel rewarded in game servers that people don't really care about feeling rewarded anymore. So for RuneScape 3, I think I might recommend playing an Iron Man over a normal account, even as a new player. If you stay playing for a while, you'll, you'll be glad you did. So this might be a factor that players forget about when considering which game they should play, and that's community. My favorite part about the game is social interaction, specifically the goofballs of free to play. Even though both games have had a massive decline of social interaction, Old Schools is definitely still there. Not all of it is necessarily good, but it's but it's still there. On RuneScape 3, I've noticed that social interactions are, are almost kind of a rare thing. Not as many people really care to respond to you or, or talk to you. But even the most crowded places are just people selling items. Free to play is, is empty. It's a matter of fact that RuneScape 3 does not have as many active players as old school. There's simply less people playing the game. And to some, that might not matter. But if you plan on asking for help or making pals, old school RuneScape's gonna be the easier game for that. You'll have no problem finding a group of people to hang out with and make friends. You know, just, um, just don't be yourself. You'll find somewhere. Well, that was a lot of stuff to consider. I don't even know if any new players are watching this. Chances are the majority of you already play RuneScape and you've made your mind up years ago of which game you're gonna play. Being the guy that's, that's presented all of this, you probably wanna know what I think you should play. And I don't know if it's obvious, but uh, neither. It's not too late for you. Go on Steam. There's so many games on there, dude. I, God, do you, there, do you know how many games are on Steam? I don't care which one you play, man. Try them both out. They're fine. Just, just pick one, dude. You're thinking way too hard about this. You're overthinking, dude. If you made it this far, you're just overthinking. <laughs> but that's all I've got about this. Uh, it's, it's, it's been great. Good to see you. Quick little shout out. I have started actively streaming on Twitch. That very real. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Jimmy with a one. I have that in my name still. Nothing's changed there. I will be playing games of all sorts and posting highlight videos on my second channel. I have a second channel. I even did some Q and A's about buy release since a lot of people are curious about where the hell that is. It's coming, I promise. Go go to that channel, subscribe to it. For Bandos. And who's Bandos? Human erosion.